we are in Blanton Forest. Now explain to people where this is and what it is, if you will. We're in Harlan County in southeastern Kentucky on the south side of Pine Mountain um, in an old growth forest that's about 3,100 acres. Old growth forest meaning? No logging, logging has ever been done here um, for a majority of the preserve on the uh, outlying tracks. There was some logging for homesteads and that sort of thing. And the American chestnut really affected the forest when it died off, so we don't call it virgin forest anymore, we call it old growth. There's a little concern because, well there's a lot of concern because as you turn the leaves over on a tree, there's all this white fuzzy stuff on it which is hemlock woolly adelgid where did these little woolly boogers come from introduced in the united states from japan in um, the 1930s wow and it was introduced in the western united states where the western hemlock showed a little bit of susceptibility but not much and went kind of unnoticed there's also some native beetles out west um, that feed on the adelgid which we don't have in the east and then in the 50s it was introduced um, into Richmond, Virginia on nursery stock where it kind of started spreading and been causing a lot of widespread problems in neighboring states for about the last 30 years. And when again did we discover that they were in Kentucky? April of 2006 here in Harlan County and since then it's spread um, pretty much in this region there's a couple isolated pockets but mostly in eastern Kentucky. How in the world do you deal with something like that? It's a huge endeavor and uh, we don't expect to be completely successful but uh, the importance is that we're putting the effort there and trying our best and giving it the best shot that we can. Uh, there's estimated to be 71 million stems of hemlock in Kentucky. That's too many hemlocks to treat so uh, we're focusing here at Blanton because they are old growth hemlocks and we think it's important to preserve the heritage of Blanton Forest. How do you go about treating these huge trees, um, or even the smaller ones. Right, there's several stages of treatment. In Kentucky, we're focusing on the chemical control for right now. It's a chemical imidacloprid, and it's synthetic nicotine. Hmm. Um, and we use a soil injector and inject a certain amount of chemical per inch of diameter of tree into the ground, uh, which it's then taken up by the roots and uh, delivered out to the end of the branches where the adelgids are feeding. And they don't like nicotine. They don't like nicotine. <laughs> None of them smokers. <laughs> they eat it and then die. And so that lasts for about three years, we're expecting. All right, if the tree dies, other trees will take its place, but that's bad. Now, why is it bad in any uh, environmental situation to lose any species of anything? If you've ever spent much time in the woods, um, especially in eastern Kentucky, you know that hemlocks grow along streams and they create this microclimate um, along streams which basically means that it's cooler there and they keep help keep water temperatures low for macro invertebrates and all of um, your aquatic wildlife. What if these things start dying on a massive, I mean, is that erosion problem? I mean, what, absolutely. what, what do we deal with if these things do? You know, Sedimentation really will absolutely be an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, water quality can be expected uh, in the headwater streams just to plummet as this thing takes effect over the next five years. Best case scenario is that um, it Hemlocks become a statewide um, understanding that it's important to treat these trees and we get a huge response both monetarily and through um, personnel and volunteer work and we save as many trees as we can um, and we actually save them so that in a hundred years there will be hemlocks here and they'll be of um, a considerable size. They won't just be sprouting up out of the ground after a hundred years of extinction. Right. Worst case scenario is that that we lose our hemlocks. It's expected that about 80% of hemlocks will die uh, if untreated. Now, if somebody does have uh, a stand of hemlock on their place and they're very concerned about those, I'm sure the first thing that's going to end in their mind is how costly is it going to be to meet and, and other shared expenses with some other, with, with your outfit. Right. Well, um, actually, um, Fish and Wildlife is trying to set up a landowner cost share to address hemlock woolly adelgid and also the Save Kentucky's Hemlocks group 
has a discounted price on the chemical if, is, if it's ordered um, through us. So you can contact us and we can get you on a list of private landowners. If you're interested in helping with Save Kentucky's Hemlocks, which we need volunteers um, for the treatment process, we need um, county representatives to go out and work with private landowners, you could reach the Kentucky State Nature Preserves Commission. Um, we have a program manager there or the Division of Forestry, Kentucky Division of Forestry, or Kentucky Natural Lands Trust. If you're not used to seeing uh, trees like this, if you live in the, the northern part of the state, to the central part of the state, you might want to take a trip down here. This is a beautiful area, uh, and you can see just what is at stake here. And it may, may make you want to become a volunteer, or it may actually move you to help out here. And uh, I think that's what this thing is all about. This right. is pure Kentucky right here. That's right. Or at least, you know, you can tell your grandkids about mm. what hemlocks were like, because it's a very unique um, atmosphere that they create.